Hello everyone, this is Jay Reeves, Simulation and Lab Coordinator. There's nothing to download here. Uh, you do need to have the most current version of Microsoft Silverlight software, and that's something you might have to contact the PSC for. Uh, if you do not have it presently, and when you try to start up the theme editor, it'll tell you if you don't have the current version, uh, you may need to go to PSC uh, if you don't have the correct privileges on your computer to be able to download that and install it to your system. But that's not usually a real big deal. It's just an extension on your uh, web browser. So uh, right now in, uh, in this web browser I'm in uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer and I've gone ahead and I'm at the Lairdall.com uh, website um, it can be important to put the backslash US so that you make sure that you get the United States version of their website because they do have different product lines in different countries. If you're curious about that, you can always just click here and you can see all the different websites that they have. Okay, so once you're at the website, we want to get to Theme Editor. And uh, the way we do that is we go to support across this bar uh, here at the top part of the headline of this website. And when you do that, this will immediately pop up. Um, and we need to go to product downloads. So we come over here. And every product that they have in their, um, in their stable is on a list here, and it's in alphabetical order. So we're going to scroll down until we reach SimPad. And here we are right there. By clicking here, you'll have quite a bit, uh, quite a few different um, downloads that are available. These directions for use are just what they say. They're the manuals that uh, you can use to refer to things for SimPad. Uh, documents, for the most part, are brochures, some uh, job aids uh, on things that, quite frankly, I don't think you'll be needing too much. Uh, this Nursing Solutions with SimPad, again, it's a, it's a sales brochure, or though, although it might give you some ideas of uh, questions to ask. But as we go further down, there are software, uh, software downloads available. At present, most of our SimPads are running SimPad software version 1.7.5, and that's exactly where we need to be, especially if you have one of the white patient monitors. Uh, the, the newer software does not run on those older monitors, so we need to stick with 1.7.5. And as I scroll down here, you're going to see it on the list. We just keep going here and there it is there's simpad software version 1.7.5 the five digits afterwards really are they're just superfluous to us we are running 175 and also you'll see at the bottom of the screen now simpad theme editor now again this is a uh, silver light extension based web browser program it is possible to download it to your computer and be able to use it offline, although I have found that that can sometimes be problematic. But basically, but basically we go here, click on it, and in the same uh, browser window, we get Theme Editor. If you want to start a new theme, click on New Theme. You'll type up a theme name, and this should be fairly uh, expressive. Uh, if it's a uh, myocardial infarction, put myocardial infarction. There, there aren't a lot of limits on how long these can be. Um, although it can help to keep them fairly short because they show up on the SimPad screen itself. The next thing to do is to select a simulator. And our simulators, for the most part, are Nursing Anns and Nursing Kellys. Now, we do have also Nursing Kid and Nursing Baby. Obviously, that, that's easy to determine as far as which is which, as far as kid and baby is concerned. But if it's an adult scenario, you can pretty much stick with Nursing Ann. You could still run that on a Nursing Kelly. There might be a couple of things that won't work quite as well, but it's not something that's going to stop you. 
The nursing in and nursing Kelly have very similar capabilities, even though their their architecture or the 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 physical mannequins are significantly different. They really do have very similar uh, capabilities. Okay, so we've selected nursing Anne, and the first thing that we want to do is start with our initial state, the, the state that the mannequin is in when the students walk in. And I am one for uh, using the term initial state. So you come over here, you double click, and this becomes editable. And now I can type in initial state, hit return, and that's what it becomes. Now let's just say that this is a perfectly healthy patient, just, just for the sake of uh, simplicity. If I come over here, and you'll notice that rhythm lights up, I get to choose what rhythm I'd like the, the uh, mannequin to be in. And there are lots of different rhythms here. You need to familiarize yourself with how these actually uh, show up on the monitor so that you can make sure that you get what you want. But we'll make this a sinus rhythm, and it's going to come up with a little graphic here. And let's make the heart rate something normal. So 84, that's a nice normal heart rate. Extra, uh, extra systoles are things like PJCs, PVCs. And also you can set how often they happen. Low, I believe, is somewhere around twice a minute. Medium is around five times. And frequent is something above 10. You can also set it to have bigeminal extra, uh, extra systoles. Uh, you can also set it to have 60 cycle interference and or uh, muscular interference or motion interference. Hit OK. And now we get sinus rhythm uh, icon and a heart rate of 84. Now, just, just so I can show you, let's see what happens when I choose a different, um, a different uh, uh, rhythm. <laughs> let's go to, let's go to junctional. That's a distinct. All right, I tell you what, let's go to AFib. There'd be more use of that for you. So now you'll notice that the icon has changed, and it looks much more like an AFib with fibrillatory waves and no P waves. But again, I want to keep this simple, so we'll go back, back, turn it back into sinus, and there we go. In the initial state, we can also set their oxygen saturation. Again, we'll make it a nice normal number, and you'll notice you can just slide along. We can set the respiratory rate. Again, we'll just make this a nice... And, and you can pick odd numbers. That's not a problem. Remember, the mannequin and the patient monitor have uh, something like a fuzzy logic circuit. It's not going to give you exactly what's on the SIM pad. It's going to float a little bit, just like real people do. Real people on a monitor float their uh, heart rates and their respiratory rates. Now, for the most part, uh, not many of our students are going to be seeing patients on continuous or inline entitled in carbon dioxide monitoring. But it is something that you could think about for things like asthma attacks as their waveforms. An asthma attack patient's waveform uh, changes uh, quite a bit. It becomes sloped as they have difficulty exhaling. Uh, the, the exhale becomes sloped. Uh, again, I, I don't see that happening to us too much. Obviously, a, a normal entitled CO2 is somewhere between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. You can set that, not set it, however you'd like to do that. Next is blood pressure. And unlike on the SIM pad itself, where the, blood, where the systolic and diastolic are kind of linked so that they both move at the same time, that's not true here. So we need to set the systolic and then the diastolic independently. And then you can set a temperature. It's going to come up in Celsius on the SIM pad theme editor. But if you'll notice, as I slide, it gives me the Fahrenheit equivalent immediately. You can set your patient monitor to give either Celsius or, uh, or Fahrenheit. But you cannot do anything to it here in the theme editor. It's set for Celsius, but it's going to, as you can tell, the Fahrenheit went up along with it. Okay, the next thing we can do in this section of the theme editor is we can adjust the heart sounds. The, uh, obviously, we can all, there are other, other ways of getting to where we've already been, such as I can click here on heart rate and I can adjust the heart rate. 
But the big thing that I can do down here is I can uh, move around with the uh, Karatov sounds, uh, pulse override. I, again, these are these are things that we. Uh, so let's say that the patient's uh, blood pressure is uh, 123 over 70 and the heart rate is 84, but they're very cold. So you want to have weak peripheral pulses. So the radial pulse is, is weak on your nursing and because let's say they're a diabetic and they're cold. Uh, so you can set so that the peripheral blood pressure, which is actually linked to the numbers in the blood pressure, the peripheral pulse should be normal at 123 over 70. You can override that and make it weak, such as someone with peripheral uh, cardiovascular problems. And you'll notice that it now says that the peripheral pulse is absent. I don't want that, so I'm going to set it for normal just because I, I chose it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ask me to do that. If I didn't choose it, it would be set for normal based on blood pressure. So again, all sorts of different ways to get to whatever what we've already done through the heart button. In the lung button here, we can hit lung sounds, and we can have the left or right lung have different lung sounds. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and choose them. Make sure that you set your volumes. I like volume. I like volume six or seven for the lungs. Real quick, we can also do heart sounds. And there's quite a variety here, and if you've if you have, um, if you've played with your sim pad, you know that these are the sounds that are available to you. Again, I'm just going to make it normal because I've done it. And you'll notice that all this is beginning to show up here. And then miscellaneous includes bowel sounds. You can put a vocal sound at the beginning of a th of a state, uh, so that it, it can be like a verbal cue for an instructor. Uh, in our blood reaction scenario, the mannequin coughs, and that's a that's a ver that's a cue for the instructor to know that the reaction is beginning because it takes time for the reaction to completely go through. Let's create another state real quick. Let's let's put this uh, let's put this scenario into cardiac arrest. So I will put cardiac arrest. And let's say it's a, let's say it's, sorry, I, I hit right click by mistake there. Let's say it's a sudden cardiac arrest, so we'll make it VFib. And now the, the heart rate changes to amplitude, so this will be how, how coarse the VFib is. And 20 is pretty nice, anywhere between 20 and 30 I like. You'll notice that it does say that there's a heart rate, but that is not actually a heart rate. There will be no pulse with this. You can set the SVO2 a little bit, just a tad lower, but remember it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen instantaneously. So I'll set it for 85. Respiratory rate should be zero because this is going to be cardiac arrest. Blood pressure should be zero. And one of the reasons why it's not showing up here is because there's VFib. Uh, the, the mannequin knows that once VFib occurs, it needs to stop breathing and needs to uh, stop its uh, blood pressure. The blood pressure is going to fall out. Temperature, on the other hand, we could still maintain, and depending on how complex you want to be, uh, you could set temperatures and then talk about things like post post uh, post arrest hypothermia and things like that. Okay, so from here, I'm going to stop this recording of how to set up states in um, SimPad theme editor and I'm going to switch over to a different to a theme that already exists so I can show you more about this section over here events it's very simple I'm going to go ahead and open a theme here and here it is now this one so this is a little more mature okay so events these are things that just like over here in states where you double clicked and you can uh, edit I can do the same thing here and uh, one of the things that's really neat is that I can also change the category name. So in this particular case, I want to make this, uh, let's say, let's say we want to make this uh, primary assessment or survey. And you'll excuse me, that's an EMS term, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for that one. This one, again, double click here. Uh, 
take it all out and we'll call this defibrillation. This one here, you can come over here. <laughs> Ventilation, whoops. This one here, and again, I've already filled in uh, defined events. Here are good things. We'll call those correct actions. And, hmm. I thought I had another one on here. Oh, I do. There it is. And these would be, we don't want to say incorrect, we'll just say needs improvement. And that's about, as soon as these things start running over like this, you might have trouble in SimPad having those come up. Now, here we have the favorites, and these are always on the screen. And you'll see that in, a, in the tail end of this video when you actually see what this looks like on SimPad. Um, we'll call this uh, core events. All right. Now, one of the things that you saw real quickly was that when I look, when I when I double clicked on this, I can choose different icons, and these are all the icons that are available. And again, those should just be special to you. The other thing that you can do is you can click and hold. And actually move these around. So if you if you wanted the correct actions to be at the front, then you could move them down here. I'm gonna put them there for now, and then I'll move this one over to here. You could do that. You you can move them around, and and that's entirely up to you. And you can even do this uh, to your own once once they're there. To add another category, just click, create a category name for it by double-clicking here, clearing that out, and you can add another category, double-click here, and you could choose a new icon. So you could say, uh, nursing process for now. And then however you'd like to add events here, uh, I'll just make something for so being nice and then to click new to create new events you just go down like this in order to eliminate events if you don't want them just click on the little X that comes up when you hover over them and eliminate them you can also move these in between one another like this and then at the end, you want to save the theme. Now, this is what's going to show up on your SimPad screen. When you save it, you can save it any way that makes sense to you. So for me, uh, for this, let's say it's a nursing three VFib uh, adult. Now, I can make it anything I want, but this isn't going to show up on the SimPad. That name that's on here is going to show up on the SimPad. And now it has been saved. It's available uh, for pickup here. I'll show you on Windows. Here it is right here. So that's an introduction on how to use Theme Editor. At this point, you can also look at the... I Oh, real quick. Sound. The problem with adding sounds in Theme Editor is that you lose all of the pre-programmed sounds, the yes, the no, the cough, the vomiting, the scream, you lose all of those and would have to go back in and put them back in. It's a, it's a idiosyncrasy of the software. And so I never touch the sound area. If somebody wants to out there, wants to try to figure out how to use it, more power to you. There's also a help file that's available that comes up like this. So if my video runs too long for you, you can always click here as well. It even comes with more information on how to do sounds. 
But I'm telling you, as soon as you add a sound, all the rest of the canned sounds go away.